Xbox is making all the right moves right now, and you can see the perception start to shift online, with media pundits starting to look at the platform in a different way, and more games are announced for Xbox Game Pass. We got a lot here to talk about, so let's get into it. What is going on guys, it's Randall419, the man with the million, back again with another video. I hope everyone's having an excellent day, and if you could do me a huge favor, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button, and please hit that notification bell. Thank you guys so much for checking out the video. I think the vast majority of you would agree with me when I say that Xbox has been dominating the gaming headlines for over a month now, to the point where there's always something new every single week to talk about. It started with the Bethesda acquisition being finalized, and Phil Spencer saying at at that round table that those games would be exclusive to platforms that have Game Pass. So Xbox consoles, PC, and iOS and Android via game streaming. And then of course we had the announcement that Outriders, a big AAA game, was launching day one in Game Pass alongside a title that nobody thought would make its way over from Nintendo Switch, Octopath Traveler. Then you had FPS Boost added to a bunch of Bethesda titles like Prey or Dishonored, giving some of those games a second chance at life. And then we found out last week that Microsoft may be looking at buying Discord and found out that they have an exclusive contract to negotiate with Discord and potentially buy them for $10 billion, furthering their gaming investments, potentially bundling in Xbox Game Pass and Nitro, and making the Xbox gaming platform even better. And then this past Friday, ID at Xbox held a showcase on Twitch, which showed over 100 games, with 20 of them coming to Game Pass Day 1, and I'm going to talk about that event a little bit later on in the video. But what I wanted to focus on in this video is the changing perception around Xbox Xbox and the brand, and all the little things that Xbox is doing to make a compelling argument, they should be the gaming platform you should invest in. And I'm going to highlight two recent articles that I've read that really kind of hammers this thing home. We have one here from Push Square. Now, Push Square is a PlayStation-centric website, and they wrote an article recently about all the things they want to see PlayStation do and how they can't be quiet anymore because Xbox is stealing all the headlines with the Bethesda acquisitions and especially with Xbox Game Pass. And the reason I'm I'm highlighting this is because this article wouldn't have existed last generation. Last generation, every media outlet and most fans had written off the Xbox One, didn't have as many great exclusives as the PlayStation, and nobody really gave it a second look unless you were an Xbox fan. But times are certainly changing because even Push Square is starting to look at what Xbox is doing and say, hey, you know what, PlayStation? You might need to change some of the things you're doing because Xbox is coming for you. So I handpicked a couple selections here from the article that clearly illustrate and showcases that even Push Square, a PlayStation-centric website, is starting to look at Xbox in a different way than they would have ever before. Quote, it's hard not to look over the fence and feel a few pangs of jealousy. While PlayStation has a comparatively loaded slate of upcoming software, Microsoft is making big moves that threaten to disrupt the status quo. We've seen it complete its acquisition of Bethesda, effectively dwarfing Sony's first-party operations. While its Game Pass initiative, regardless of financial viability, is making games like Returnal look like daylight robbery in comparison. PS Plus to Sony's credit is outstanding value right now, but as times move forward, PlayStation is going to need to react. Frankly, the Bethesda thing has changed the game, and while we don't expect Sony to roll over and let its tummy be tickled, it's going to need to invest. The strength of the Japanese giant first-party studios is not up for debate, and its pipeline continues to be among the best in the industry, but with Japan studios shut down, media molecules seemingly tethered to the largely unpopular dreams, and Sony San Diego making MLB The Show 21 for multiple platforms, the formerly unstable Unstoppable PlayStation Studios is beginning to look a little light. It's really hard to criticize a platform holder that's been banging out Game of the Year nominees on an annual basis, but with blockbuster games taking more time to develop than ever before, can Insomniac Games, Guerrilla Games, Sony Santa Monica, Sony Ben Studio, Sucker Punch, and Naughty Dog carry the burden of first-party development alone? Ryan said that PlayStation is committed to organic growth, and we've seen all of its studios staff up significantly over the past few years, but there's going to be a reckoning in a few years once Microsoft teams get up to speed. Sony will, of course, continue to do what it's always done, which is to make groundbreaking games, but it does feel like some things are going to have to change. The news cycle at this point in time is dominated by a very disruptive competitor, and we can't help but feel like it needs to make a bit more noise of its own. Moreover, it's going to have to work harder than ever before to justify the value of its internally developed games because its competitor is going to be dwarfing its output later in the generation for a nominal monthly fee. 
that's a problem. The consequence of the Bethesda buyout means that PlayStation is probably going to spend more than ever on timed exclusives. We know that it was at one point trying to lock down Starfield, but it's going to need to do more than that alone. It's probably at some point going to need an answer to Game Pass, and while the platform holder's first party pipeline remains as impressive as ever, there's an argument to be made that a once world being stable of studios now looks minuscule compared to the competition. Now don't get it twisted, this video isn't about how Xbox is amazing and the PlayStation 5 is absolute garbage. It's about all the ways that Xbox is making media outlets, like Push Square specifically, look and talk about Xbox in a different way. This article would have never been made during the Xbox One era, but it's being made now because Xbox had, up until 2018, six studios and it now has 23, which is almost almost double what PlayStation has. And the cherry on the top of all this is Xbox Game Pass. Every game from those 23 first party studios will be in Game Pass day one at no additional charge. And now you're getting big third party titles like Outriders on the service day one. And if that continues to happen, Game Pass could be a completely disruptive force in the industry. And I think Push Square realizes that. They even mention how Returnal for $70 looks like a ripoff compared to Game Pass. And they're hoping that PlayStation has some answers for this under its sleeves. So we have a PlayStation centric website make an article about Xbox talking about the virtues of the platform in a way they never would have last generation to the point where they're questioning what Sony is doing with the PS5. And next up, I'm gonna talk about prominent video game journalist Paul Tassi and his decision to stop playing third party games on the PlayStation 5 and start playing them on the Xbox Series X. So over at Forbes, Paul Tassi is talking about how he's gonna start over Outriders on the Xbox, even though he's already put about 30 hours into the demo for the PlayStation 5 version, even though all that progress would carry over over, he's starting over on the Xbox for a variety of reasons, and one is Game Pass. While I may end up with a review code for Outriders, the game is launching on Game Pass Day 1, which obviously is a big reason for many consumers to pick that version over another if they're already signed up. Outriders is 60 on PlayStation, not 70 like some recent games thankfully, but on Game Pass it can feel free if you have a sub already. 2. All the tiny annoyances of the PS5 have overwhelmed me. The poor UI and remapping of the home button, whatever they've done to badly screw up the friends and party system, the fact that Outriders and other games will still have copying phases whenever they are patched, which will be frequently. Anytime any game tries to use adaptive triggers, poor controller battery life, this list is getting long. Number three, tiny non-game pass benefits of Xbox that add up, like quick resume and smart delivery. The later doesn't apply to Outriders given that's already out for new gen, but it does for other games from Avengers to Cyberpunk, and a user interface I don't hate. And I could preload Outriders a week early there. In this instance, I am not losing access to my friends who will be playing on PlayStation because Outriders is launching with crossplay on day one. Again, I'm not tossing away my PS5. I'm still playing all the exclusives I'll need to play there. I'm still playing Destiny 2 there. When crossplay activates, we'll revisit this. But for third party games like Outriders and others, I'm moving to Xbox this generation. Sony didn't try hard enough to retain my loyalty this time around, breaking what wasn't broken and not fixing clear issues from last gen. Again, don't misrepresent this video as Xbox versus PlayStation and Xbox is amazing and PlayStation is terrible. I firmly believe the PlayStation 5 will be an amazing system and have some game of the year exclusives whenever they do come out. This video is about the things that Xbox is doing differently this generation, whether it's Game Pass, whether it's acquiring all those studios and Bethesda, whether it's smart delivery and quick resume, it's all the little things that Microsoft is doing that adds up to get people like Paul Tassi, to get outlets like Push Square to look at Xbox in a different way they never would have before. Now to end this video, I wanted to talk about the ID at Xbox event that Twitch held for Xbox this past Friday. And let me tell you, I do have some issues with it. For the most part, I thought the game content was pretty good, however, you cannot have a four hour stream. People just don't have time for that. So in the future, if Xbox and Twitch were to do this again, I would hope that the showcase would be between 60 and 90 minutes. Nobody has time for a four hour show. And honestly, you need to get guests that actually know the names of the game and are excited to be there. The interviews with the developers don't need to be longer than five minutes. And please have better branding for what titles are coming to Game Pass on day one and which games are exclusive to the Xbox ecosystem. I shouldn't have to go to Xbox New Newswire to find out which games are exclusive and which games are coming to Game Pass Day 1. All that information should be presented to me during the stream itself. I shouldn't have to look anywhere else 
for this information. But with that said, here are the 20 games coming to Xbox Game Pass on day one. You have Art of the Rally, Astria Ascending, Backbone, Boyfriend Dungeon, Craftopia, Dead Studio Drive, Edge of Eternity, Hello Neighbor 2, Library of Runia, Little Witch in the Woods, Moonglow Bay Recompile, Narita Boy, Nobody Saves the World, Amino, Recompile, Sable, Second Extinction, She Dreams Elsewhere, Stalker 2, The Ascent, Undungeon, Way to the Woods, and Wild at Heart. So let me know what you think about all this in the comments below. And if you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Hit that notification bell if you want to be notified immediately whenever I drop a video like this. Please share this out on social media or tell a friend about the channel. And if you want to take your support even further, you can always hit the join button where you will get access to channel badges and emotes for the Xbox 2 podcast we do with Jez Corden from Windows Central every single week right here on my channel. Thank you guys so much for watching. I truly appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next video. Later, guys.